You know, since it's that Christmas season, we're, we were all really excited to be going to the store, buying gifts for each other, getting gifts. We may still be getting gifts, right? Well, you know, I think a lot of the time, we get caught up in the part about gifts and getting gifts and giving gifts to each other, but we forget the real reason why we celebrate this season. So I'm going to tell you all a real quick story that will hopefully help you remember why we celebrate the season of Christmas. It's called the story of... The three trees. There were once these three trees, and they all had a dream. The first one's dream was that one day it was going to be made into a wonderful treasure chest that would hold the most wonderful treasures of all time. The second one's dream was that one day he was going to be made into a ship that would carry kings and queens across oceans. The third one's dream was that one day it was going to be the tallest tree in the forest, so that it would be the, so that it would be the closest one to God. Well, years went by. And the trees got bigger and they grew leaves. And one day, a woodsman came into the forest. And he saw the trees. And he saw the first one. And he said, wow, that tree, my buddy the carpenter, he could really use him. He could really turn him into something nice. So he put down the first tree. And he saw the second tree. He said, wow, that's a big, strong, thick tree. People at the shipyard, they love to have him. So, so he cut down the second tree. And he saw the third tree and he was like, well, I don't really have a use for it, but I'll cut it down anyway. So he cut down the third tree. The first two trees, they thought, yes, we're going to be made into exactly what we want to be made into. But the third tree, he thought, man, I'm, I'm never going to get to be the tallest tree in the forest, and the closest one to God. Well, the first tree, instead of being made into a wonderful treasure chest, was made into a little feeding trough for the animals. And the second tree, he was just made into a little fishing boat. And they both thought, man, what happened? thought we were going to be made into these wonderful things, but instead we're made into these little common objects. And the third tree, he was worse off than the rest of them. He didn't even have a purpose, he was just put into storage. But that's not the end of the story. Years later, a man and a woman came, and the man's wife was pregnant. They were looking for a place to stay, but there wasn't room for them in any of the inns. The man said, hey, you can stay out there in our stable, it's not much, but it'll keep you safe and warm. So they went out there. And the man's wife had the baby, had the boy. And the man, he wanted to have a wonderful crib for his son, but all they had was that little feeding trough. So he laid the boy in the manger, and right then and there, the first tree knew. That he was holding the greatest treasure of all time. Years after that, a few men went out on a boat, and they were having a good time, you know, fishing. And but then all of a sudden, this huge storm came in. And it was blowing them around, and they didn't know what to do. And the second tree, he thought, man, I can't protect these people. This storm is too strong for me. They're all going to die. But the men on the boat woke another man who was sleeping. And he got up to the front of the boat, and he said, peace. And the wind stopped, and the sea is calm. And right then and there, the second tree knew that he was holding. of kings. And after that, the third tree, while still in storage, one day a few men came, soldiers came and took this beaten down prisoner, carrying him to the top of the hill. And when they got there to the top of the hill, they nailed the prisoner to the third tree. But you know what? Right then and there, the third tree knew he was the closest one to God, because the man that was nailed to him. was Jesus Christ. Now that's the story of the three trees, but why did Jesus have to die? Why did he have to be nailed to the cross? I'll tell you what. <coughs> See what that says? That's right. It says sin. It says in the Bible, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It also says in the Bible that the wages or the payment for our sin is death. So if we've ever sinned before, which the Bible says we all have sin in our lives, then we deserve the penalty for that sin, which is death. But that's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross. And that's why he shed his blood. Because it says in the Bible, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our sins on the cross. But he didn't just stay dead up there. They took him down, and they buried him in a tomb. And he stayed in the tomb for three days. And three days later, he rose 
rose from the grave. He conquered sin and he conquered death. And it says in the Bible that if we believe in Jesus Christ, if we believe that he truly did come down, live a perfect, sinless life, gave his life on the cross, and then three days later rose from the grave, we have repentance in our hearts, which means turning from our sinful ways and trusting in God, then we can have forgiveness for our sins and have eternal life with God in heaven. Because Jesus was. The greatest gift. Thank you very much.